If the current episode of Monetary Tightening were a scene from a movie, we'd be looking at something similar to the scene from Apocalypse Now, where a group of helicopters is approaching a small village on the beach with Ragnar's Ride of the Valkyries beaming from the speakers. Put on Saiwara, make it loud, and the Romeo Foxtrot, shall we dance? Today we'll look at the latest dispatch from Zoltan Pozar, global head of short-term interest rate strategy at Credit Suisse, and as usual, he has some bold takes to share. In this paper, Zoltan hits on a few key points. First, the Fed calls versus the Fed put. Second, monetary heroes and anti-heroes. Third, the Fed's impossible trinity and what gives. Fourth, the need to invert our thinking about recession risks. And fifth, the Fed's options to inject more volatility to tighten financial conditions. Zoltan writes, our aim today is to highlight the risk that we might be dealing with a Fed that won't be intimidated by curve inversions and asset price corrections, but will be emboldened by them to do more. A Fed that pushes against a curve inversion by hiking more than what's priced today to tighten financial conditions further, despite recession risks or perhaps even with a covert recession goal in mind, in order to maintain price stability. So as we've seen in the headlines recently, the Fed hiked rates and is expected to continue into the summer as well as reducing its balance sheet. A tighter monetary policy from the Fed to combat inflation inflation brings asset prices down and creates a negative wealth effect. So a key question from Powell's latest press conference this past week was, is the Fed going to continue to tighten even if it risks or even guarantees a recession? During the press conference, Powell said that the number one goal of the Fed is to bring inflation down and that they hope for a soft landing. However, just a few days later, Jerome Powell changed his stance and said, quote, whether we can execute a soft landing or not, it may actually depend on factors that we don't control. So after creating the inflation themselves, Powell now says, well, really the Fed can't handle it without causing a recession because, well, I mean, it's not our fault, of course. And so Zoltan writes, volatility by design is a desired outcome for the Fed. Does the Fed want to wipe off some of the gains that accumulated before the pandemic? Also in the last press conference, Powell said that his hero is Paul Volcker, former Fed chair. Zoltan says that Powell's anti-hero must be Ben Bernanke, also a former Fed chair, at least in a cyclical sense. The art of quantitative easing was forged under Bernanke's stewardship, and the original aim of QE was to reflate in order to avoid deflation. Reflating house prices reflating stocks, and reflating the price level were the goals. Asset price growth was a target and positive wealth effects were a target too, to generate growth and jobs. Looking back, QE was essentially monetary policy for the asset rich with trickle-down benefits for the less wealthy. Asset price inflation on the back of traditional QE and consumption growth on the back of fiscal QE, helicopter money aka stimmy checks, pushed the level of demand higher and the pandemic and geopolitics that pushed the level of supply lower. Something changed. Inflation got high. Some inflation is coming from abroad, but some is coming from home. Services. No one knows how to slow it down, but one thing is blatantly obvious. Fiscal QE was too much and traditional QE is no longer appropriate. If the origin of QE is to lean against deflation by generating asset price inflation, positive wealth effects, then leaning against inflation must involve generating asset price deflation negative wealth effects. So essentially Zoltan is saying the Fed must reduce asset prices like stocks and real estate if it wants to be serious about funding inflation. QE overstated its welcome. We need a round of negative wealth effects. We need shock therapy. We need a Volcker moment. Price stability, full employment, and financial stability are not possible to achieve all at the same time. Something has got to give. The Fed appears to have chosen price stability as the priority. It wants slower growth and higher unemployment. Further tightening financial conditions means some financial instability by definition. Nothing systemic, but turmoil still. See the tech stocks and crypto solve. I find it puzzling that some argue that the reason why there won't be a recession is because household and business balance sheets, and in the case of businesses, profits, are so strong. I think the opposite. There can be a recession precisely because balance sheets are so strong. And if we follow the line of argument above, strong balance sheets means the Fed needs to lean against the wind harder to shock demand lower. The negative wealth effects means pain for balance sheets. So I mentioned earlier Zoltan wrote volatility by design. 
but why? Zoln says that volatility is good for the Fed as volatility is the best policeman of risk assets. Volatility itself can help drive down asset prices and help lower inflation. The best thing that the Fed can do to achieve its goals is to stop talking, hike 50 basis points, sell 50 billion of 10-year notes the day after, and put an end to press conferences to keep the market on its toes and keep them guessing. If low rates, forward guidance, QE, and low volatility nurtured risk assets and demand by design, then hikes, constructive ambiguity, quantitative tightening, and higher volatility will hurt risk assets and demand by design too. Consider the idea that strong private balance sheets raise the risk of a recession, for they may force the Fed's hand to shock risk assets more to make sure we get a recession, or at least a very hard landing so that the Fed can slow down inflation enough. We have never achieved a soft landing, so let's not pretend that the fastest pace of hikes in a generation and an unprecedented shrinkage of the balance sheet will yield one. As I see it, the risk of recession, whether it's real or merely implied by an inversion of the yield curve, won't deter the Fed from hiking rates faster or from injecting more volatility to build up negative wealth effects. And signs of a recession might not mean immediate rate cuts to ramp demand back up. Cuts may have to wait until the Fed is certain that inflation is surely dead. Zoltan goes on to reference Apocalypse Now again. in the morning. Volatility is like napalm for risk assets. Consider at least the possibility that the extreme volatility and lack of liquidity you see in markets is by design, and the Fed will not be deterred by it, but rather that it will be emboldened by it in its singular pursuit of price stability. The Fed loves the smell of volatility in the morning. Alright, so that's gonna be it guys. Please subscribe and thank you for watching.